Hello! So, I thought I'd do a little YouTube video, um, mainly on longbow archery. Um, what I've noticed is, uh, especially in some of the clubs, archery clubs, up in the north here, is that longbow archery seems to be having a bit of a revival these days. I've noticed quite a few of uh, us longbow archers hanging around, and whenever I've gone anywhere with my longbow, I seem to have picked up quite a bit of interest from other people. So I thought it might be interesting for maybe some other people who are out there thinking about maybe trying more traditional archery, a little bit about what I do with mine and possibly how you use them, the equipment you use. I can go into costs possibly in a later video because I don't really want to break you into numbers starting off. Um, so yeah, about me, my name's Nathan, you guys probably know that from my profile, or you know me, or some other way. Anyway, uh, I'm originally from Swansea and I picked up a longbow archery about two years ago, I think now. Um, started off on an 18 pound recurve bow with my local archery club in the university I'm at. And then decided to get my own bow and happened to get a 60 pound longbow. Um, pound draw weight, not pound price wise. I'm not sure, 60 quid longbow would be good. Anyway, uh, so yeah, I started off with a little bit of a collection, courtesy of my mother and father at Christmas, as most people do, I think, and um, started shooting with that. Um, <laughs> I'll go into my equipment in a bit, but I think the first thing I could say is to jump from an 18-pound longbow, 18-pound uh, recurve bow, up to a 60-pound longbow probably wasn't my best idea. Um, You've obviously heard, if you're an archer, the term overbowed, and this usually comes from people starting with an 18 pound bow and jumping up to maybe a 24 pound bow. And basically, your muscles don't develop right. You need to build up your muscles. It's like walking into the gym and deciding to pick up the heaviest weight. And to jump from an 18 pound bow to a 60 pound bow, well, I think everyone saw quite how useless I was when I started it. It shouldn't really be done, at least not without guidance and help that way. Um, my coach actually in the university was really helpful and taught me through all what needed to be done and taught me proper technique and all that, and that was great. But again, because there's not that many traditional arts, especially I'm the only one in my club, um, it was quite hard to learn sort of what I consider more proper techniques on how to shoot, although you can transfer skills between more modern archery and obviously more traditional archery. Anyway, enough about that, we'll talk about that again later on. So I'll talk you a little bit through my equipment, uh, I'll start off with my bow, I haven't strung it, mainly because my ceiling isn't tall enough. Um, I think I'm right in saying my bow is 72 inches tip to tip, um, 60 pound draw weight. And made by, I can't remember his name, um, unfortunately he was dead, the bow you made this, but yeah, I'll show you it. It's very pretty looking longbow. I think it's lemonwood backed hickory, or hickory backed lemonwood, can never remember the way round. Um, modern, I think it's fast flight string on it, which seems to be the job. Um, it's about 10 year old, um, bought second hand on eBay, again, please don't ever do this, you don't know what you're going to get, but I happened to hit a perfect sort of uh, bargain with it, as it were, and uh, it's, it's got a little bit of wear and tear, you can probably see the horn end, that end's a little bit dingy, and again, it's been well used, so this horn end's a little bit thing. Um, again, if I sort of hold it back, you can see it's got a little bit of spring fall on this. Um, bow limb should be straight, um, but it's not quite. It's, it's had a good view, so it's uh, light. So, yeah, that's it. Horn knocks, horn arrow pass on both sides. It can be used left or right-handed. Um, I'm a lefty, if that helps anyone. Um, and that's my bow. Well used. Um, my arm guard. Um, for leather with leather cord. This one was made by Carol Archery. Um, absolutely fantastic. Fletcher 
And to be honest, just about anything to do with bows. I don't know if you can see that. Um, I'll give you a sort of quick demo of what you do with it. Just in case anyone's uh, a bit curious. So, slap on rest, tighten up. It's one thing I do like about traditional archery, you do get to wear quite a bit of leather. So, all down there, and you tie it up or whatever at the bottom, depending on your preference. And that's basically stop string hitting your arm. Um, the higher poundage longbows do really need quite good um, arm guards like this. I will show you, or try and put up on here, a couple of pictures of me uh, after I'd shot my first couple of arrows when I uh, first got this bow. And Bruce threw an arm guard, it's quite impressive. Um, you can see this one is quite thick for an arm guard. It's uh, fairly, well, I'd say fairly, very good quality and uh, served me well. But yeah, if you're doing longbow archery, arm guard, solid, full thickness is a must. Um, to string my bow, just going through the random crap in my box here. Um, always use a stringer. There are people who do the step through method, but the problem is if you don't get it perfect, if you've not been doing it for years, and I started doing this, which is really bad, you can put uneven um, pressures throughout the limbs, and then if there's any weakness in that bow at all, what happens is it tends to find the weak spot, and the pressure gets there, and your limbs will just snap or it will make a noise and you won't notice it and then you'll draw your bow and it'll slap you in the face it happened to a good friend of mine in the archery club with his homemade one so stringer basically you got two little loops put those around the horn ends step on this middle bit pull the bow up flick the uh, string over the knock and there you have your set up bow much easier even Pressure throughout the whole bow, much recommended. I and mean, what's that called? Nylon string, a couple of pence, saves you a bow, it'll cost you a couple hundred. Job done, you're not going to complain here. Um, when I got this bow, I still have the old string. A um, little bit tattered, as you can see, held together now with a bit of insulation wrap. Um, basically, it's, you can see the fibers are separate and everything. Definitely, if you get a new bow, Always make sure that your strings are in good quality. You snap that, you might well snap your bow at the same time. Not worth it. Again, for what's it for a new string? 10 quid maybe for a good one? Not worth it. Go to your local archery shop, get a string. Um, as far as shooting gloves go, I always use a glove. You can use tabs. I have had tabs and I do have tabs. I find they don't quite give you the right protection and then they don't make me feel quite safe. They won't make me shoot quite as long because it cuts into your fingers, especially with a higher poundage bow. So I use my, I think it's deer skin, um, bear paw archery glove. You see again, well used. This has had two seasons of shooting now. Um, lines coming through the glove where the string's held, but really good, really comfortable. You can get a nice anchor point with it. Um, when I first started using it, it did make me feel a little bit like I wasn't holding the string because it's a lot thicker than a tab. But actually, once you get used to it, it's no problem at all. It's really good, uh, really nice little hand, uh, finger tab, hand glove, shooting glove, shooting glove. Um, finally, as far as really bow equipment goes, um, I use a shooting glove because using proper fletchings and not having an hour rest shooting off your hand can really cut up your hand. So that's my little shooting glove for my left hand, instead of my left handy. Um, and you can just see, look at the, oh, let's have a look, look at the wear and tear done to the end of that. You can see here where it's all coming away because the fibres have been cut in it. And I say this has had another probably two seasons, but it's seen better days now. You probably need to get a new one this year. Um, so yeah, you can imagine that could be in your hand. You'll end up with cut hands and you can see people in the club sometimes have a go at one of the longbows and they'll cut their hands straight just off the fletchings of the arrows. Speaking of fletchings of arrows, let's go on to that. So this is my quiver. It's a LARP quiver, so a live action role play one that I bought because all the normal quivers, A, to be made out of leather, which I don't know if you ever heard an arrow in leather, but rattles like hell. Really does, really annoying. So this is sort of like hempy sort of material. If you listen, very little noise with it. Chuck it over your shoulder. Happy days. I, I do realize I have a knife, I'll talk about that in a bit. I've got a variation of arrows. Um, most of my arrows were made by 
uh, Carol Artry, I'll put a link at the bottom of this video. Um, I've got a couple of what I like to call my special arrows or my show arrows, and I've got a couple of Carol's own arrows, which I'll put you, and then I'll show you ones I've made myself, just in case anyone's interested. Um, not that they're very good. Um, so, the first type of arrow I have, oh, Carol Archer, you can see her little logo there. Um, I think it's an ash shaft, painstakingly done. Look, that is a work of art. That takes absolutely hours to do, and she does it absolutely beautifully. I think the goose feathers, um, the shaft, I think it's an 1132 inch shaft. Um, if that means anything to anyone, it's diameter inches and um, the tip of this special one as I said is a bodkin tip mm, I've used these at the archery range on occasion mainly because when you shoot um, a long sort of quilled arrow um, it does make such a beautiful noise um, and because that's a fairly straight edge the archery tip archery team tolerate me attacking their bosses with that um, the second type again, a Carol special again with the absolutely beautiful um, twined sort of uh, veins on it. Absolutely lovely. Uh, this time um, with a broadhead tip. This isn't allowed to be shot at the club. I am allowed to cloud shoot it outdoors, um, but again, workmanship put into that. Absolutely beautiful. Um, heavy as anything, but really nice to shoot, make a beautiful noise come off the bow. Um, then I have my Carol, what I call my Carol standard arrows. Um, just this, these ones are just glued in, uh, plastic knocked. Um, the other ones are horn knocked, if you're wondering. Sim down to shaft 1132s. Um, again, you can see Carol's logo on it. Absolutely beautiful. This is a um, just a brass point one uh, competition style uh, point on it. Lovely, spring is ending, ash I think. Um, absolutely lovely. If you ever do get a bend from catching the boss as I often do, straighten them out absolutely gorgeously. So they're lovely, absolutely lovely. Well worth the purchase. And also Carol does arrow match your arrows for you. I've not visited her personally, but the guy I got this off, very similar build, very similar um, Uses that I am with my archery, so it was really done nicely for him. So, that plate to If you notice, her um, fletchings are really quite long, and what this tends to do is stabilize the arrows quite quickly. I'll talk in that in another video, but very beautiful things to see. And finally, I'll talk you through my attempt. So, this is one of my arrows, um, <laughs> yeah, a skin standard. I charge about three million per arrow, they're that good. Um, no, but sort of pieced together from various shops that I've bought bits from, feathers, shaft, this shaft a little bit bigger than Carol's, I don't know if you can see that. Um, the arrow's a little bit heavier, and the veins, again, if I compare it to one of Carol's, are a lot shorter. These are less stable, but I don't really care because they're fairly cheap to make. I use them outdoor mainly to uh, have something to shoot without worrying about my more expensive arrows. Simple glue in point. I can talk you guys through how to make these, maybe make a couple of videos if you want. Um, plastic knock there. All very good. Very nice, very cheap and very happy to break them. Um, again, a lot of people see me in the club and they're like, why do you have one of these? You don't need one of those. You don't need a knife in the club. Um, I agree with you, I don't need a knife, I could easily use a screwdriver. The reason I have it is, um, when I first started I often hit um, the wood surrounding the bosses we used in the club and try and get an arrow point from a 60 pound longbow about 30 meters out of one of those. They bury themselves a good inch deep and you just really need something to sort of tease them out. Um, I'm not advising anyone to walk around with a quiver full of arrows and a knife slotted into it in the public. Keep them in a locked box until you get to your club or whatever, then use them there by all means. Not against people, but you know, to get stuff out of wood and whatnot. Um, yeah, so that's sort of my first little rundown of it. Um, if you guys want to know anything about it, or if you're interested in any other videos, by all means let me know. Other than that, um, 
I'm pretty much done. Hope this was sort of a helpful, quick little insight into what you need, I guess, to do longbow archery. See ya!